Hey foodie friends and seafood lovers. Tonight I'm gonna fry up some uh, flounder and also some tilapia, both from Walmart. So it'll be like the Walmart brand frozen tilapia and flounder. So let's get cooking. Okay, so I'm not a huge fan of tilapia. I have tried to like it, but honestly this looks so good. It's not too big and it was at Walmart, again frozen but it is uh, bone free. Like I always feel everything for bones. Most filet fish should be bone free, but a lot of times it has a lot of bones, but it's a beautiful color. Anything pink like that is usually good. So here's the flounder and I felt it for bones. And as usual on any fish that I've gotten, if it has some, even if it's catfish, whatever, around the rib area and the top of the, its back, because there's the tail. So the rib area, top of the back, that's where you might feel some. So I didn't feel any in this one, but this one, I felt some right in here. So, you, you know, I cut them out throughout. So you just want to feel because you don't want to eat those or have to spit them out later. All right, stay tuned. We're going to bread it. Okay, so what you want to do after you've cleaned the bones out and rinsed it a little bit, you want to squish it really good. I've talked about this before, kind of like if you had scallops. You want to get all that fluid out of there because they infuse it with a lot of a salt water solution. It tells you right on the package. I think it helps to preserve it. I'm not sure because they're gonna freeze it anyways. And I'm gonna go ahead and season it and put a little bit of mayonnaise, not egg, all together in this bowl. Rub it all around in there and then we're gonna put some panko breadcrumbs and cornstarch in this bowl and you'll see how it works out. So I'm just doing some low sodium salt. Sometimes I use the Himalayan, but I'm going low sodium salt and some pepper and mayonnaise. When you season your meat, whether it's chicken, fish, whatever, and you're gonna fry it, go ahead and season the meat first. I've learned that trick years ago, and it actually holds the flavor a lot better than if you put it all in the flour mixture, whatever it is your coating is. So I just wanna make sure we taste the fish. The idea is to see what, what do we like better, the tilapia, the flounder, personal preference, we'll see. So as you see here, when you work with cornstarch, it tends to splash everywhere, and it's kind of a hard item to work with, but it gives it a nice crispiness to whatever you add it, but be it panko breadcrumbs, regular breadcrumbs, or flour. So definitely put you some cornstarch in there. Okay, so let's get to mixing. So we're mixing this around just so it's all incorporated. And as you know, you want to have a wet hand and a somewhat dry hand. You're going to mix the meat, being in this case the fish, into this, put it into here, and then your dry hand can kind of handle it without coming, becoming a big claw. So let's go ahead and do that. Just give it a little dab. All the seasonings are on it. Doesn't need a lot of seasoning because it's a thin fish. I'll plop it in here. Dry hand. I usually do this over the sink, but I want you to be able to see it, so here we go. So you kind of mix it up, set it down, take your dry hand and take the dry ingredients. Let's see if I can hold it like that. And uh, dab it around on there. So you do that with each piece of fish. We could tell the difference in the flounder and the tilapia just by the way it's shaped. And you lay it on a plate, I prefer to have it in the fridge for about overnight, but even an hour, even a half hour would help this to stick so it doesn't come off when you fry it. Okay, so we're breading, just breading here, shaking off the excess, laying it on the plate. Mixing it in the very lightly mayoed seasoning here. Helps everything stick. Put it in here. The dry hand really comes in handy. Kind of push a little bit down on it. The tilapia is more firm, more sturdy than the flounder. So the flounder is more delicate. So you want to just cook them accordingly. Okay, 
I'll let that sit in the fridge for a little bit. And we'll get ready to fry it. I'm gonna heat the fryer up now. All right, so I've got the tilapia ready to go. Just waiting on the uh, deep fryer to heat up. I'm gonna cook these together because they'll cook at a different time than this more delicate flounder would cook. You wanna make sure that when you pull the stuff out of the fryer, you don't put it on paper towel. Everybody was raised that way that I know of, but you wanna put it on a drying rack so it stays crispy on the bottom and the top. And then I've learned over time to go ahead and put this foil down so it doesn't get all over your surface. Also, just so you know, I, mean, I don't do a whole lot of frying. I've been doing more deep frying recently. Uh, I love this fryer. I did a whole video on it before, so take a look at that. The booklet for this suggested that everything be 365 to 375. I'm finding out that's not the case. So 350 is kind of a good normal for most things, because if you cook it too fast on the outside, like a big piece of chicken, it's not going to cook the inside and it's going to burn the outside. So just do your due diligence on what you're cooking. Don't always go by what's on this uh, side here. So the fryer is ready and I have it on about 350. And what I have since learned to do is once you put something in, sometimes depending on what it is, the hot steam comes through the edges and the handle actually gets a little warm. Not unmanageable, but I'll just go ahead and do this to kind of protect myself from any hot steam. So let's do this. Tilapia. Let's, let's go. This fryer is great for chickens like me that don't really want to work with open frying. Uh, if you've looked around YouTube, you'll see all kinds of people cooking in either a cast iron skillet or in one of those big skillets that sits on the counter and plugs in, but it's not covered. You'd have to put a splatter screen over it. And in this case, I just like to have this here to keep it from shooting out. So I can't tell you how many minutes to cook it. So we're gonna at least do maybe a couple minutes and I'm gonna check it. Now, as you can see, the steam is coming out and around. So again, you can touch the handle. It's not too bad, it's definitely manageable, but it's the steam around that I like to just kind of have a little buffer. Let's give it a check. The neat thing is with this, you can set it here, cover it back up, and it continues to drain a little bit, lets the oil calm down before you decide to really check it out. So that's looking pretty good. Knowing it's such a hearty fish, I'm just gonna go maybe another, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds. All right, so it looks like it's ready to me. It's golden brown. I'm just gonna do a hard flip instead of trying to pick it out. I just, it can't escape when it's, in the basket. So just flip it over, let it dry, and then we'll work on the flounder next. So I've got the flounder ready to go. The ready button is on because sometimes it cools down after you cook something. That's what's also nice about these. It keeps a constant temperature for the most part, or when you cook in a pan or whatever, you don't know unless you put one of those little thermometers in and that's a little hard to work with. So. This isn't probably gonna take long at all. But again, you wanna just keep an eye on it. Down there. The other nice thing too about a deep fryer is you don't have to flip anything. But in a pan, everybody has to cook it a couple minutes on one side, flip it over, it's popping all over the place. This you don't have to flip. Should be ready now. You can set it up on the little strainer. Hangs on the edge of the basket. Let's see how it looks. Looking good. To me, it's a nice light golden brown. Flip it over. Let's let these cool down. And we're gonna taste them. See which one we like better. Do you like flounder better? Do you like tilapia better? Go ahead and comment below. I'm all ears.
Okay, everyone, so here's the flounder here. Flounder's there. Tilapia's here. Let's give it a try. Try the flounder, it cuts right through. Super uber tender. Nice and juicy looking. Can you see that? It's kind of hot. Let's see how it goes. That is very good. Walmart flounder, guys. Frozen Walmart flounder. I will be getting that again. All right, let's try the tilapia. Oh no, it cuts good too. Deep fryers are amazing things. Take a look. Look at that. Mmm. Okay, the tilapia is good. Probably something my husband would eat because it's not as flavorful. But I think the flounder is by far better. But I like them both. But I would definitely be eating the flounder more often. I can tell the tilapia is definitely a firmer fish, not nearly as tender. Well, it's still good, but it's not as, mm, what's the word? Just not as. <laughs> mm. If you like this video, maybe give me a thumbs up, maybe even subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.